Hi everybody, my name is Kasaya. Um, this video is a tutorial on how to sew this gorgeous bag right here. It's called the Trailblazer Convertible Backpack by Bagstock Patterns. Um, I will put a link below so you can find the pattern if you want to buy it and try it yourself. This is such a fun sew. You get lots of different techniques and lots of different features in this bag. It's beautiful. Um, this is my first tutorial. I found this bag and knew it was the one I wanted to try and start with. So please show me some love, comment below on things you liked about it or things that I could improve on that maybe next time I could do differently and maybe patterns that you would want to see done in a tutorial, maybe something that you've been wanting some help with. Um, and subscribe to my channel and I will hopefully be doing more videos and thank you for stopping by. Okay, so I have a ton of connector straps because I'm doing the handles a different way. Um, so I'm going to prep those all right now. Very easy, just, well, I kind of fold them in half first you could use double-sided tape if you don't trust yourself on this or draw a line down the middle, um, just like this. I love, I love this little ruler. It's the best thing ever. I use it at my table all the time. So you can just put a line down your center. I'll show you the way to do it if you're not very confident on just eyeballing it. And you can put tape here. I like to do it on the outside right here. And then on the other side here, just like that. You've got your piece like that, lying down the center. Move on my tape. Sometimes my uh, tape doesn't want to peel off very nice. There we go. This might be something that you already know how to do and this is pointless, you can fast forward, but just in case, fold this part to the center. And this part to the center. So you have no raw edges. So you're just going to sew down an eighth of an inch, top stitch all of your connectors. And I have my machine set at about a 4.5 for most of the pattern. Um, except when I'm joining some pieces, I move it down to about a four. But for all my top stitching, I normally do a, a 4.5. And I am going to chain piece most of mine here. I know that's usually something you do in quilting, but it totally works for these connectors because you can just move them all through together, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of my connector pieces. Okay. And there are all the connectors. And now I go ahead and I attach my hardware to them just so I know I have all the hardware and it's done. Okay, those are all prepped and ready to go, so I'm gonna set those aside. And then next, I'm gonna get my straps. Now again, like I said, I'm doing vinyl on one side and denim on the other. I'm doing, um one and a half, I cut them to three. I put tape on the edges and I put a line down the middle and I'm just folding the edges into the middle. And then I'm going to clip them to the denim one, which I've kind of done the same on the denim. I just folded the insides in and I um, folded down my edges on my denim because I don't want a raw edge on the denim. The vinyl is fine with the raw edge, so I'm leaving the raw edge. So I'm gonna fold the vinyl and then I'm gonna put those two together and sew them together just like that.
Okay. Now that I have those done, I'm going to take my other side and clip those together and then I will sew those together. I'm going to go ahead and do the next one and then we'll put those aside and do the handles. Okay. And then all we have left is the handles. Um, I'm doing those total of four inches wide. I'm folding. I want them to be kind of thick and, and durable. I'm making them out of vinyl, not cotton. So I did the same type of thing I did on the last um, strap first. I'm just folding them in the middle. They're gonna be one, one inch wide when I'm done. So I'm folding them into the middle line, which will make them two inches. And then I'm gonna fold them again. like that and then I'm going to fold them one more time like that and then sew those together and I don't feel like I have to clip all the way down just to start with it kind of helps and then I just kind of sew these together just like I did the straps Okay, now that we have all of our connectors, our straps, our handles done, we can move on to actually putting the bag together. So I like to clip all of my pieces to their pattern piece with a clip. So I'm organized, I know what's what. It really helps um, me in the process of putting the bag together. So first um, on the pattern, it says you want the exterior top panel. So we're gonna take that piece. I'm gonna take that and put it aside so I don't lose it. Um, what I like to do is I fold my piece in half and I'm just going to give a little clip where the center is. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little clip so I know where my centers are. And then it's easier to know where to put my connectors. I am, I changed my mind about the connectors. I'm gonna follow the pattern and we're going to put them down like the ha handle should be. So if you're not doing a connector, this is exactly how you would do your handle as well. You would put it all the way to the raw edge and sew it there. I'm gonna do the same thing with my connector. Um, so it says two inches from the center. Here's my center. Right here, two inches. And two inches. <clears throat> That's where the edge of your piece is gonna lay, right there. Oh, it would help if I had the right one. This one. Okay, just like that. And then you're going to sew them on. I feel like this is a part where you could kind of do it how you want, whatever, whatever. The way they're showing you is to do two rows of stitching, like a rectangle around it. I think that's what I'll do. I'm also gonna put a rivet on it. Um, when I get it all put on, I'm going to do rivets because A, it supports it better and B, I really like the look of rivets. 
So we're going to sew along the bottom and then I'm going to come up along the stitching that I already have on there. Just to sew it on there a little bit more, more support. I like to do X's a lot through my handles and connectors. It gives it a ton of more support and it looks good. If you guys are sewing with vinyl for the first time, be careful. If you have a walking foot like me, it can rip your vinyl. So what I like to do is get just a scrap piece of leather or vinyl and put it under the foot when there's hardware behind it or it has like a bump to go over and I put it there to begin with and it helps it not rip my, my actual piece that I'm working on. So I'm just gonna do one row of stitching because then I'm going to add a rivet. Got those connected just like that so if you were just doing the handles that would be the handles right there I'm going to I'll show you what I'm going to do is I have my handles and later I'm going to connect them just like that so they can fall down when they need to when you're using the bag so on one of these pieces, you need to also put the connector for your backpack um, hook. So that goes just right in where you clipped that little tiny clip. You just put that and center it up with that. And it wants you to sew it the same way. Okay, so that's my finished exterior, what was it called? Exterior, exterior top panel. So I'm going to go ahead and put my other two on my other piece, but I don't need the middle part because that's for the backpack part. So just do the exact same thing. Mark two inches in on both sides and attach. So if you're doing it this way, that is what that would look like. If you're doing it with the handles, you would have the handles attached to there and your connector there. So let's move on to the next part. Okay, so next up, they want you to work on the exterior front panel, which is your flap here. You start with your flap, okay? Get your flap piece out. And we're gonna put some, um, I'm using these magnetic snaps with prongs on them and we are going to put the mail I think we put the mail piece so the one with the bump sticking out mine's bent a little bit there okay um so this pattern piece is cool because it has markings of where your snap should go you can also measure they give you the measurements i like to poke holes out of that and i just place it so this is the inside of my flap and i am marking the back side of it and i'm placing my flap on it and i am just gonna mark the center of where those snaps should go it lined up pretty good 
before. So I think it's a good way to do it. So I've got my little markings there. Make them a little bit. And then I just want to take my snaps. Just a minute. This snap is kind of weird. I'm going to grab another one. I'm not liking the way it's bent. This one's bent too. There we go. Okay. So there's two different ways you can do this. You can, you can take the little washer, oops, the little washer that's um, usually put with it and you can mark on the little lines. I'm kind of ghetto. I just take that and press it into my fabric and I can see where my markings are at. And I use a little blade and do a couple little cuts. You can use a um, seam ripper if you don't have a blade. I just do a couple of cuts like that. Right, and it goes in easy. Just like that. Um, one thing I am going to do is I am going to put a piece of heavier interfacing over that just so it doesn't tear my actual piece of fabric because sometimes the prongs can poke into your fabric and it might over time uh, wear it out a little bit. So I'm just going to use a thicker piece here. You don't have to do this, but I think, why not? It's just an extra measure to protect your bag. I am not cutting into this right lately here. There we go. So I put that on and then I put the washer on. Put that into place. Sometimes my fingers don't want to bend it. Just like that. Okay. And then you do the other side. Okay, so that's what your piece should look like, front and back. I'm going to trim up this so it's not in my seam allowance. I don't want that in there because it'll add extra bulk. Okay, next. We need the front flap zipper pocket lining panel. So the lining of your flap. Okay, so we're going to take the back. Make sure I'm marking the right side here. And we need to draw enough space for a zipper. Seven and a half wide. So, and it wants seven eighths down. So my pattern printed out at 90% accidentally, but I liked that because I wanted it a little smaller. So all my measurements have to be a little bit different on my bag. So be aware when you print out your pattern, what the print size is at. I think I've heard with these patterns, for some reason, 
in the US, they print smaller. So, but that's something I wanted on this one. So I'm just gonna go down here. After you've drawn your markings on there, you're going to take your front piece, your front piece, and put this right side down on it and center it. If you want, you can. I am a big fan of just <laughs> snipping the centers. It's just such an awesome way to match up things. We can just snip both of them and then it's easy to just line them up right there and I know I'm in the center. Okay, clip that together. Sorry, I'm trying to go along exactly with the pattern so it's easy for you guys to follow me. Okay, and then we sew along the markings that we made. When I um, sew along for to install zippers, I shorten my, um, sorry, I say um a lot. I just realized that throughout this. I shorten my stitch length a little bit, probably to about a four. Sometimes even shorter. It's just easier to go around the corners and stuff when you have a shorter stitch length. So go ahead and sew that on. Are you going to be in my video? No. <laughs> I'm not be in your video. <laughs> I just been bored and I finished the first page of my history stuff. Okay. That's good. I'm recording right now. I know. Okay. <laughs> we can go have lunch. And, oh, wait. When do you go back? Uh, my class starts at 11.35. Oh. So we cannot. We cannot. I'm not hungry. I ate a chicken pot pie. Okay. Where are my little scissors? Um, these ones? No, these yeah, ones, okay. gotta. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you. Don't mess up your video. I already did. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I sewed my markings, and then it wants you to mark a half inch in from where you sewed, and we're gonna we're gonna cut this so it folds down. Just like that. Okay. Get some scissors. Cut it down. I'm gonna use my razor or my blade. Have more control over it. Okay. All right, so you cut that away. And now you're gonna fold it down. And I like to trim this away a little bit. I don't think it tells you to in the instructions, but I feel like it helps a little bit. 
So you're gonna fold it down and out of the way and you're gonna take an iron, will help when you get it all folded. I like to clip it, it helps. Throwing stuff everywhere. It's kind of cool how she did this zipper flap. I kind of really like it. And that's what it needs to look like. Okay. Okay, and then you get your zipper. I got mine already cut. You can use zipper tape if you want to, or not zipper tape, double sided tape. I am just going to eyeball it. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to use tape because I want it to turn out right. Okay, so we're going to put some double-sided tape on the bottom part. It'll help it stay in place. Double-sided tape is your friend. I love it. Okay. Now let's put it on here. Okay, and sew that on. An eighth of an inch. Okay, and you got your zipper on there. I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit. Okay, so you should have your zipper on now. Should look just like that. Next, you're gonna fold this up so it meets with the top. Okay. And then you're gonna close up the sides. of your pocket. There's not much room to work with on that. Make sure you fold your flap out of the way. You don't want your flap in there. You're just sewing the pocket lining. It looks like I can trim more of my zipper away too. I don't want that extra zipper. Do the same thing on the other side. Don't sew your flap, just your pocket. Mm -hmm. 
I like to go over where my zipper is a couple times because like I said, I, I'm paranoid about my stitching coming undone. Even though it never has, I just feel like if something were to go wrong, that would be it. That would be what went wrong. Okay. Yep, now we're sewing our other side of the flap. So take your other flap. Your inside flap, pin it right sides together to your outside flap. Put that together. And you're gonna sew those together. Do not sew the top, just the edges, just around here. Don't sew the top because you have to you have to turn it. I am doing a smaller seam allowance because I printed it at a smaller. you to top stitch. Ooh, I like it. It's looking good. Make sure you get those corners poking out there. I like to roll it a little bit. It kind of helps. You can iron it. I feel like with all my interfacing, I get a good crease anyway, so I don't normally have to worry about ironing everything. But feel free. Iron away. It helps. I just kind of clip it. Now, make sure when you're top stitching that you're not catching your pocket in there because you got your pocket inside. You shouldn't, you shouldn't catch your pocket, but I could see that being an issue. Okay. So now I'm going to top stitch the outside. And go kind of slow around the corners, move it. Well, I try to go slow. Sometimes my foot doesn't let me. should be what your flap looks like. There's the outside. There's the inside with your snaps, your zipper and the pocket. And now you can go ahead and sew along the top and just tack that down. Just eighth of an inch, not by much. Just to close that up and get your zipper to stay in place. Awesome. 
flap is done. Okay, next it says front slip pocket. We're gonna work on the snaps on your front slip pocket. So I have my front slip pocket panel. Um, oh, actually I need that. I need that. So we're gonna do more snaps. So this is where your flap is gonna snap on there. Again, there's measurements on the pattern piece or there's a little area where you can just mark. I like to just mark. Make sure your pocket is laying the right way. You want it longer wide. So, you know, make sure you're reading the piece right. Um, and I like to mark on the back. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do my markings for my snap. Again, you can use the measurements, you can use the piece, however you want to do it. I'm also going to take my flap and make sure it kind of lines up. Looks pretty good. I feel like this one could be over just a bit. Right there. Okay. And then however you like to put in your snaps. Awesome. I always like to take my flap and make sure everything is good. Yep, good on there. So next it wants you to sew along the top, three eighths, seam allowance. Make sure I have to mark my machine because I don't have a plate that does it. Let me mark it real quick. Kind of ghetto. Hello. Three eighths. That right there. So take your zipper or your slip pocket lining. I'm going to do it like that. No, I'm going to do it that way. Okay, along the top is all. And you're just sewing along that top edge, three eighths of an inch. my snaps get caught. Okay, and then you're gonna flip it over. Again, you can iron it if you want to. I'm not going to because mine folds pretty easily. Nice, and I'm gonna top stitch it, and now you can top stitch. It wants you to baste around all the sides. So, yeah, top stitch this finished edge here. This one I just turned over, connected, and then we're gonna baste the whole thing together, okay?
Then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew down all the edges. You got your snaps on the front, lining in the back. Your flap's gonna go right on top of that. Just like that. Okay. All right. What's up next? Okay, so it wants you to get your one of your exterior bottom panels. So mine is a vinyl one. You should have two. I want you to get one of those. Okay. Make sure you got it going the right way. And you're going to, you're gonna baste this all together too. So you want your top edge up here and there's gonna be a little bit showing of your panel, okay? And you want to just clip that in place, just like this. And then you're going to baste it all the way around. <clears throat> do you want to take me or do you want me to drive myself? Just drive yourself. Okay. okay. We're going to baste that to the panel. what we have, right? Slip pocket. Okay, now you're going to take the exterior. Oh, it wants you to put your flap on now. So we're going to get the flap, clip it into place. You want it to be on your clips, right? Because you want it to match up. And then it wants you just to baste the top of it into place. I got my flap on there now. <sighs> All right, now we need which piece is it called? Don't need that piece. This one. It's a tiny piece. Your exterior middle panel. Okay. You should have two of them. And take that. I want you to do a 3 8 seam allowance, however much. This is tricky because some of you, if you use a smaller tape, you may not have that much room. Um, I suggest using a bigger zipper tape. I used a five, number five zipper tape. I like to use that on most of my bags. So just kind of center and make sure that's centered on your piece. Put that into place. Three eighths or however close you can get with that zipper there. I don't think it's gonna be an issue for me. 
I'm gonna zip my zipper down just in case it's kind of in the way. <clears throat> yeah, I think it is gonna be a little bit in the way, so I'm gonna just pull it back up. Okay. Okay, got that put on there, and then I think we top stitch. Yep, we top stitch. So flip this up, just like that. And now we're gonna top stitch that. Says an eighth seam allowance an inch. looking good. So cute. Okay, what's next? Okay, I want you to add your last piece of your front, which is this one that we did earlier. Make sure you're not putting the one with the backpack piece on it because that goes on the back and this is the front of your bag. The front. Pinning that on. Make sure you got it centered. Three eight seam allowance. I'm gonna shorten my length just a little bit. And then we're gonna top stitch. That. Ta -da. Shoot, you know what? I forgot to add my, forgot to add my label. I can still do that. All right. I feel like the top stitching is important for two reasons. It makes your bag look awesome and it gives it that extra support that your bag needs to handle all the stress you're gonna put on it, especially on those connectors. Okay. That is what we have so far. Looks pretty good. I like it. Okay. Next. Okay, next we're gonna work on the back slip pocket panels. Um, we're gonna work on our zipper part first. And that zipper panel is one of the pieces at the beginning of the pattern that it tells you extra to cut out along with the handles and the connectors and all that kind of good stuff. So if you haven't cut that out because you didn't see that part, go back and read it. It's there. 
um, back slip zipper pocket or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so we're going to take that piece, turn it over, and we're going to do um, mark a um, zipper on it. So you can either follow the instructions, do it your own way. Um, there's many ways to do the zippers. I kind of have a set way of doing mine. So I'm going to go ahead and mark out my zipper. And I'll show you what I'm what I'm doing, marking out a box like that for your zipper. Again, if you just fold this, find your center there, kind of leaves a crease. I can see a crease. And then I just fold this, put that on. It says, 1.75 from the top. That's about 1.75 from the top. So center that on your back panel and pin that in place. And you're gonna sew around it. You're gonna sew around those lines you just made, just the outer ones. I make that middle line because that's the line I need to cut. Um, open to do my zipper. So I just went ahead and made the mark. You don't have to. Okay, so we're going to sew around that for our zipper. And I'm going to shorten my seam allowance or my stitch length, not my seam allowance, for my zipper. around that take the pins out and then we want to cut the inside out well slice it out that's what my lines for I'm going to cut this middle line here and then I take my razor or my blade from the corner and come in and make those little triangles in the corner. And it helps your pocket lay really nice, your, your zipper area. Make sure I got it. I did. Go to the other side. Okay, so we cut it open. Now we're going to take the pocket, pull it through all of it. Again, this is where you can iron you want that good crease there which I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna go iron this out 
So I ironed that out. That's what the front looks like. That's what the back looks like. Ready to put my zipper on there. Have my zipper all ready with zipper tape, or I always say zipper tape, double-sided tape. And we're just gonna sew that sucker in there like a regular, like you would do any regular pocket. Okay, just put that on there, that, and we're going to sew around the whole thing using just your regular top stitch length. And I start kind of here in the bottom corner, usually, and then go around. You're going to need to move your zipper out of the way, probably. That's what the front should look like. That's what the back is right now. And now we're going to pull up this piece and sew all around it to close it up. Okay. I kind of just like to put a couple clips in place just to keep it from going anywhere. Very simple. And we're just sewing the pocket lining, not this front slip panel. Okay. Well, I'm gonna start on this side. Just like that. Shorten my stitch length just a little bit. Your pocket should be done. All sewn up. Okay, make sure that's all good. Looks nice. Now you need to put the rest of your slip pocket panel on with this bag. You have two options on the back. You can make it so it has a luggage slip. So your slip pocket is going to go all the way through, there's gonna be no bottom to it, or you can make it a regular slip pocket and sew it on the edge. I am going to do the luggage slip um, to put on a suitcase, which I think is probably one of the coolest features about this bag. Absolutely love it. Um, 
So to do that, you just sew the top and the bottom and we're gonna do right sides together here. And then after you sew the top and the bottom, you're gonna flip it the right side and top stitch. Okay. And then we're going to go to the other side. Okay. Just like that. And then we're going to flip it. So awesome. Okay. And again, take it to your ironing board. Iron the edges if you want, because we're going to top stitch. I'm just finger pressing mine. And then you top stitch. And you can baste your sides together as well. Yeah. Although you're just going to baste them onto your piece in just a minute. All right. Top stitch that down. pocket in the middle pretty cool so next you get your other exterior bottom panel Put my pieces side your other panel how far one inch from the top edge Make sure it's even, even Stevens. That right there. And then you're just gonna baste it on. And here they call it a trolley, a trolley sleeve pocket. That's what I did. I did a trolley sleeve pocket, which I call a luggage slip, but same diff. And then you're gonna continue to put together this like you did your front piece. So 
So you're gonna take your other exterior middle panel and then we're gonna need our back, our back piece. And put those on. top stitch that just like we did on our front fold that over and top stitch I'm just going over my connectors two times, reverse them back over them. Just give them a little extra support. And then top stitch. two front and backs done. They look so awesome. Now we're going to work with, we need our side pockets. I have one for my inside. And our exterior panels. Okay. So we got to make our little pockets on the side first. So just take your lining of your pocket and the front right sides together and you're just sewing along the top three eighths and then flipping it over and top stitching. You could totally make these a little longer or like taller if you wanted to. I don't know. I thought 
they were a good length when I did it. So I'm just going to leave them. I'm not going to change it. And then you want to top stitch again, use your iron. If you want to iron, I cannot iron this cause it's waterproof canvas. Okay. Just top stitching it. Those are your two side pockets. Okay, and then we're gonna put them, we're gonna pin them to the side panels. So it wants you just to baste it to the bottom of the side panel first. So just baste it to hold it in place there. both. Okay. So we have them basted to the bottom and then we need to work on the sides. So it's really simple. You just kind of clip up your side here. I like to sew it in place first before I clip up the other one. And does it say seam allowance? That doesn't say seam allowance. It's just paste. Okay, so I Sewed it there. Now with this one, it's going to come up a little bit. So that's what gives that pocket, what makes a pocket a pocket. Kind of sticks out a little bit. looks cute on the bag. Just like that. Okay. Baste that into place. And then repeat on the other one. <clears throat> Pretty simple. Because then you got a nice little pocket there. <clears throat> Same thing on this side. Same thing. Okay, we got our side panels done. Okay, awesome. So your, it's telling you next, your back bottom connector, so there. 
I want you to get the back piece of your bag and your connectors that are going to connect the backpack part. I meant to try to do the triangle, triangle backpack connectors and I forgot. But that would be a good option for this bag, I think. Um, maybe next time. So I'm going to sew these together real quick. Just so they stay together when I measure and cut. Okay. I just want you to cut it at a diagonal, a half inch. So we're going to mark them half inch and cut it like that. I'll show you just a second. Just like that. Okay. And again, I'm just going to sew these together so they don't come apart when I'm trying to put them on the on the bag. And I want you to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to sew it or uh, give it a stitch up here too so the hardware doesn't flop around as much. If you can see it, but just like that. And it looks like I need to zap those threads real quick. Okay. I'm probably going to add a rivet to these two and attach them to the bag. Um, I just feel like, of course, like I always say, it adds the extra little support that it needs. So do the same thing to your other connector. Just a half inch angle to the corner. Just a second, I'm gonna figure out which way I want up. This way, okay. kind of stinky but okay so I want you to connect these one inch from the bottom just mark your inch up and you're just basting these into place so when you sew it all together they'll be there
I'm just kind of looking and making sure they're both even. Okay, I think they're good. I'm probably gonna go and I like to rivet these right there, kind of up more, just so they stay in place and they have extra support. Don't, if you rivet, be sure not to do it too close to your side there because you don't want it interfering with when you put it all together. You don't want it to be in your seam allowance. So make sure that you do it up here and out of the way. Okay, next. Okay, next. We're gonna do um, our side connectors on our side panels. So I just put some tape on my pieces here just so they can be taped together like that. And I put a piece on the back to connect and we're gonna sew them onto the panels. And then when we're all done sewing these on, I'm gonna rivet every um, connector that I've got on so far before we put it all together on the exterior stuff. Okay, so it says it wants you to do one and a half down. So you need to find the middle. So again, I just use my awesome ruler here, which is the middle's about right there. And I need to go one and a half down which is right there. And I'm placing, it's measuring from the top of this part, not the top of here. Yeah, the top of this. I'm just kind of eyeball it about right there. like it needs to go over just a little bit here. Right there. Okay. And then I'm going to sew that on. See which way I want to go. Um, okay, so again, you could do like an X stitch if you wanted to through that and it would be awesome for reinforcement. I'm going to put two rivets in mine for my reinforcement for this one. So we just get the other one and we do the exact same thing. I'm just going to fold it in half this time. Okay. 
one and a half. right there looks good okay and I will attach that Okay, those are attached. I'm gonna take my pieces and go put all my rivets on. Rivets on before I do anything else. Um, the next step, I think, is putting foam on your bag. My bag, I interfaced it so I don't have to do the foam. I don't want the foam on it. I think it'll make it too. It'll be too much, but if you want foam, now's the time after you attach all this and do all the rivets to put your foam pieces on. I'm gonna go do the rivets. Okay, so we are all done. I put the rivets on everything. So our whole outside pieces are complete unless you're doing foam, then you can add foam to them. So those ones are complete. And now we're gonna work on a couple of our inside pieces. So we have our um, zipper pocket panel, which is two pieces because you wanna leave that hole open. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna leave this open and I'm gonna leave um, the lining. I'm gonna leave part of the lining open so I can pull the whole bag out through the lining, which is easier because there's a bigger space and then I'll pull the lining through this pocket hole to sew that and then I'll sew up the pocket hole. It's an awesome way to do it. I think it's the best way to do it. So there's no wrong way. Okay, so this is my interior piece and my zipper pocket panel. I just need one to start with. And we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other zipper pocket, draw the whole rectangle on it. I want you to do, it doesn't stay on that. I'm gonna go, I usually go one and a fourth from the top of my a uh, pocket piece is where I start to draw my box. Um, again, there's lots of different ways to do it. That's just how I do it on all of my bags. Again, my rectangle and then I'll just find the almost wonder if I should make that pocket bigger next time and it says about 1.5 from it wants this piece about 1.5 from the top which is plenty all right there center it up And sew that piece on around the rectangle.
need to cut that. And zipper in. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to iron these up so it makes it easier to sew it closed later. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go to the iron real quick and just um, make a, that's about a fourth, maybe a little bit more of an inch crease line. So when I go to close up this pocket at the end, my um, line will already be there and it'll be really easy. Okay, I ironed, I ironed this up along with this one and I pulled it through, ready for the zipper, double-sided tape on it so it goes on nicely. And we'll sew that in there. We sew that in there first and then we add the back of the pocket and we sew around the top and the sides and then we leave the bottom open for the end. All right. There's that. I'm going to sew that in. Under there, move our zipper out of the way. Now we're going to take this piece and we're just going to put it just on like that, pin it or clip it into place in a couple spots and sew that right on. Don't sew the lining, but sew just the pocket pieces. use a lighter to kind of melt the edges of my zipper so it doesn't fray. Sew that together.
just gonna trim these corners down here just a little for when I turn it. Or when I sew it, it'll make it easier to turn the other way. Okay, so we have a hole. We didn't sew the zipper down in the bottom. Okay, so next we need to do the slip pocket on the other side. So slip pocket measurements should be in that odd place where there's no actual piece for it, just the measurements. And you just fold it in half. We're just folding it in half and putting it on top just like that. And I'm going to um, put a line down on the middle of mine and make it two pockets. But first I'm gonna top stitch it. running low on bobbin. Okay. I'm gonna measure how big the pocket is. Middle would be right there. Put your pocket right on top. You can clip if you need to. I'm just going to do it in a couple spots so it doesn't move too much. Just like that. And then baste that on. When I baste mine on, I'm also going to make the separation in the pocket. For that line I made and I go up. And then I go over one and then I go back down. pockets on the inside. I am going to add um, one more. Look at that. Beautiful pockets. Um, I'm going to add a like a water bottle, like a small water bottle holder. Just, it's the same, same thing we used on the outside of our bag. I'm going to put one on the inside. I'm just gonna top stitch. I just have a piece of waterproof canvas. That's all I'm using. You could, you know, line, do it like a slip pocket. How you do the fabric for slip pocket and cut it out like that. If you wanted to add it to your bag. Nice thing about waterproof canvas too is it doesn't fray so you don't have to worry about sealing off your edges or anything you can just 
put it down like that. Take my lining and do the same exact thing that I did on the outside of the bag. like that. Okay, and then you have one on the inside too, which I kind of like. Just like that. Okay. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, now we're going to start putting together the pieces of the body. Um, the important thing on this is that we need to be able to stop. It's a three eighths. So you need to mark your pieces because you need to be, be able, you're putting on a square bottom. So you need to be able for it not to be sewn all the way to the edge. It'll make sense when it all goes together if it doesn't make sense yet. So I just use a pen. I just mark the bottom of my piece with my three eighths. So I know to stop where those two cross. I don't know if you can see that. So I need to stop sewing my sides right there and right there. I'm going to do it on my bottom too, just in case. I don't know which one I'm going to be looking at. So take your, well, I don't know if it matters. It has you starting with your back piece. And these don't matter, they're the same. So you're gonna take this, make sure I don't have any threads getting in there. They also have you going like this with your pocket to get it out of the way. It's a pretty smart idea. So you don't have to worry about it, you just kind of pin it together like that. And we're gonna start piecing this, piecing this on, clip it. And we're going to sew three eight seam allowance all the way down. Okay. And I know I have a full bobbin, so I'm ready to go. And remember to stop. You got to remember to stop where we marked right there. We stop. And I like to go over my little backpack connectors there just a tiny bit. Okay, 
And then you do the same thing on the other side. It's your other side piece. I'm gonna clip it together. I find clips all over my floor when I'm done with a sewing project. <laughs> they fly everywhere. Okay, so I'm starting at that 3 8 inch mark right there. Backing over that connector. sides on you didn't sew all the way down right needs to be like that and now so I didn't, you sew your other piece on same thing don't sew all the way down Now, we're pretty sure we connect our bottom. Now we connect our bottom. And my bottom piece, I need to do one thing because this isn't fully attached. So I'm just going to sew um, a rectangle to reinforce this piece on my bottom real quick. I like the light way it looks when it's done. It's kind of has a nice little touch.
Okay, so I'll show you. I just sewed that on. See, it just gives it a nice look on the bottom. You do not have to do that, but I like that. Especially if I'm not doing, uh, if I don't do purse feet or anything like that, I like to do that. Okay, so for the bottom, you're gonna start with your long edges, okay? Right sides together. And you are gonna start all the way in the corners. I don't know, it wants you to start three eight, stop three eight. So that's where this marking on your outside piece comes in handy because you know to stop there at the three eight, that's right. So do not sew all the way to the corners. Don't do it. Stop at your mark. I always get so excited by this point, but it still takes so much time to finish. Okay. Bend it out of the way there. So we're starting at our 3 eighths mark. You know what, just a minute. I think I wanna sew from the other side. So I can see where I'm at with my stabilizer. So I should have marked on this, but it should be right in the corner. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself this whole video. Okay. I'm doing it on this side so I can see my stabilizer because I don't really want to sew over it. So I think that helps it look better. I want to sew right next to it. And do the same exact thing to this side. See, I sewed just this one side, now I'm sewing this side. Again, start at that three eighths mark and end at that three eighths mark. Yeah, that's where my stabilizer is. So if you cut out your stabilizer with the pattern piece that they have and center it on your piece, it should be three eighths of an inch all the way around it. We have those done we go to the sides and the sides so we should stop and start right where we did on our other pieces so it should close it out making a box we should have that extra fabric to Okay. 
when I'm done, I'll go back and make sure that my corners are completely closed. They should be. and poke through, make sure we have all of our corners sewed together. We do. Okay. All right, I want you to trim all your seam allowances except where you have connectors. So where your backpack connectors are, don't trim down there. I mean, I don't have huge seam allowances, so I would need to be careful with my trimming. Next, we're gonna do the lining. So with the lining, you want to do a little bit bigger seam allowance, not at the top, but as you go down to the bottom, you want your seam allowance to get a little bit bigger because you don't want your lining to be baggy in there. You want it to fit good and to get it snug, it needs to be a little bit smaller than your outside piece. So, um, same thing goes for this. You need to stop three eighths of an inch away from the bottom. So you might want to mark all your pieces again. So you know to stop and you put it together the same exact way that we did the body piece. So I'm just gonna make some markings real quick to make sure I stop. So just start putting all your pieces on, sides first. Start with your three-fourths, or sorry, sorry, no, not three-fourths. Start with your three-eight seam allowance up at the top and then widen it as you go down a bit. They say all the way to three-fourths towards the bottom. So, and stop at the, oh, three-fourths mark. They want it to be three-fourths at the bottom. Okay. Let's do what it says, because pattern knows better than me. Three-fourths mark. Okay. Mark my other side three fourths as well. I wonder if I should have just done that. Mm. Okay. 
sorry. Let me remark all this. So you got your panel pieces on there. And then just gonna make sure everything's facing up the right way. And put your other pieces on. Again, remember to go back up to your 3 8 seam allowance up here or else it won't match up in the end when you're trying to put it all together if you do that big seam allowance throughout the whole thing. Go ahead and trim my seam allowances down right now. It'll be easier before I put the bottom on. on but we're gonna leave one side open to turn the bag through I don't think the instructions asked to or say to do that but that's what I'm gonna do because I feel like it's a well might be the same I feel like it's a better opening to pull the bag through so that's what we're going to do. Oh, now my pieces are too big. I'm going to clip my centers. Real quick.
because it doesn't quite match out with the edges because I did cut my seam allowance, which maybe I shouldn't have cut it first. It'll still go together okay. I'm just going to measure three fourths in so I know where exactly I should start. About right there. I'm going to stop and I'm going to skip it. I left it open. And we'll seal up the rest of it. Again, we're doing this just like the first part of the bag. The only difference is the seam allowance and I left a hole to sew up the, or to pull the bag through at the end. If I was doing this again, I would not trim that seam allowance down first. I would wait till I was done putting it all on. It still works just fine, but it might be confusing. I 
I don't trim down the side, I'm going to turn through. I feel like there's more room to turn through there. Okay, so our lining is complete. And next we have the zipper. So let's get that all ready. Okay. For this next part, you need to have a zipper. I cut mine a little longer than I need it to be. I cut it about 20 or 21. Um, I just wanted the extra, the extra room on it. So what you need to do is take your zipper tape and it wants you to fold it at a 90 degree angle like that. And the trick is you need to do it equal on both sides. So it'll match up on your bag. So I would suggest doing that and sewing it. So it's just stitch it really carefully so it sticks in place. I don't know about your machine, but my machine does not like to go over this zipper when I do it. It's a little rough, but it's doable. You just really need to just tack it into place so it doesn't fold back. Just like that. So I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side of it and try and get it as even as I can, which sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it works beautifully. I just kind of match it up before I sew it, make sure it's about even. About right there. Hopefully it stays. It did. Okay. That always doesn't go so smoothly. But so now it's pretty even where I stitched it back. Okay. Okay, so on your bag, you need to turn it right side out. Isn't it cute? It's looking good. It's looking good. Um, turn it right side out. And it wants you to mark. So this edge right here, it wants you to mark two inches up here. And that's where you're going to start your zipper. I'm going to do a little bit less because my bag's a little bit smaller. So, from that seam, because two puts me right up there. So, I'm going to do okay, I'm going to do about three, one and three fourths. Okay, so I want you to mark that. And I think that's where, yeah, do it on the other side of the panel too, because that'll help you taper off your zipper or know where to taper it off. So again, two inches from that seam or I'm doing one and three fourths because my bag's smaller. Okay. All right. So you're gonna take your take your zipper tape. And you're laying it face down. You're laying your zipper tape face down. Your zipper pulls over here on the left side, and where you put that mark is where you're laying your zipper tape right there. My marks right there, I'm laying where it folds, the start of the fold right there. And you're gonna clip. And you're just gonna clip all the way down. Zippers, some people 
they intimidate, but zippers are just something that you just have to practice. They're really not horrible. You just have to keep practicing. And they don't always turn out perfectly and that's okay. So, where does it want you to taper off? By the time you get to your other mark on the other side, it wants the tape to be completely off because it's not gonna be, it's gonna be hanging. So you want to slowly taper it when it gets down there. My vinyl's kind of uneven, just a minute. Hmm. So you just kind of slowly take it down as you get there. Okay. He wants a fourth seam allowance. So This part's always fun, trying to get the bag to cooperate under your machine. All right, sew that sucker on there. doing quite a fourth um, I'm doing a little bit smaller because I know I'm gonna sew over it again when I put the lining on and I don't want this stitching to show I always have a hard time okay what we have. Okay. Okay. We have to unzip the zipper to flip it over. I'm just going to sew over the end of mine <laughs> so I don't completely take my zipper off. My zipper pull off. I don't want to do that. Okay. It doesn't matter if that's ugly because we're covering it up in the end. So, okay, completely unzip your zipper and you wanna flip this around. So it's gonna be face down. I'm just gonna pin it there so I don't lose it. Just like that. So now it's kind of like inside out, but you have to do the same exact thing to the other side. Okay, so you want to start in the same place that you started with your other side. So for me, it was one and three fourths, the directions say two. Mine's a smaller bag, so I'm going a little bit smaller on my markings. Okay, so that's where I want to start it, which 
looks about even. Like if you look at it, it looks even. If it's not even, you need to resituate it. And then just go ahead and do like you did on the other side. Pin it all the way down or clip it, I mean. I use clips because I'm doing vinyl. And then we're gonna sew that on just like we did on the other side. Okay. And this side, that's tricky too, cause you wanna make sure that your zipper kinda goes down in the same way as your other side, which is hard to get perfect. It won't be perfect, but just do the closest you can. And I think with me, I'm gonna start where this tapers. That's where I'm gonna start sewing. Again, sometimes it can be hard to get this bag under. Gotta bend it. Make sure you don't have anything else underneath you. Hopefully it matches up pretty well. I think it does. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Next, we're gonna get our lining. Make sure your zipper pocket is undone. We are going to place the exterior into this one and we want our zipper pocket along the back so we put it in this way so you want your exterior facing out you want the right sides to be together And you might want to just tuck this somewhere out of the way. I think I can pin mine. I don't know. I think I'm going to clip mine to a connector so I don't sew on it, if that makes sense. I'm not, I want to make sure I don't sew into it. So you're going to start clipping it all along the top, trying to find the seams there. I usually go by these side ones first on both sides. And then the middle. And then go around to the other edge, same thing.
this part's kind of tricky because you want to make sure your zipper for your tail is going to be okay and lying. Like hopefully it doesn't get caught in a funky way. So just be careful with that. And then start clipping everywhere else. I like to use a lot of clips so it doesn't move. Okay, and then sew that together. It says a fourth inch seam allowance. I like to go slow on this part because I don't want to have anything come out of place. I'm going to sew it from the other way. I feel like I can't see what's going on doing it that way. I don't like it. See, my clips already came out back on okay let's try this again I'm gonna sew it from this way I think it tells you to sew it the other way so whatever way you want to do it is great but I think this is the way I'm used to The main thing with this is just don't sew over your zipper. <laughs> I think that's the biggest mistake you can make doing this part is sewing over your zipper. So as long as you don't sew over your zipper, I think you're golden.
ました。Zipper likes to move. Let's try that again. And here we go. Fingers crossed. I'm going to trim this down right here. Okay. Now we turn our, turn it out. Check in to make sure I got it all. That'll get caught with the top stitching. Looks good. So now I'm going to show you the reason why we left a hole in the lining and the zipper. If you don't understand what I was talking about. I'm going to reach through my zipper pocket. I'm going to pull my lining bottom through. And I'm going to sew it up this way, push it back through, and then sew up the pocket so I don't have that weird seam in the inside of my bag that's visible. I'm also going to trim that just a little bit. Okay, so now my lining's completely sewn up, see? Which is fabulous. So now all I have to worry about is the pocket. So I just bring the pocket out and I had earlier, I ironed it with that little seam. So now all I have to do is sew it shut. Okay. 
I lose so many clips in the trash. <laughs> okay. So this shut, and then all we have to do is top stitch. We did it. Getting it to fit in there nicely, all the corners. Okay. Nose itches, sorry. Um, now, all we have to do is top stitch. Let's make sure this zips. Beautiful. All right. Top stitch our bag up. I can't um, iron mine at the top because I have vinyl. It will completely melt it. So I just kind of pull when I tug and I press it with my fingers to kind of get it down. And that seems to work pretty well. I could press it on the other side, but I'm so paranoid about melting my vinyl because I've done it so many times that I don't want to try that. Almost there. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna top stitch that very carefully now. I'm gonna go slow. Probably start over here at the corner. Sometimes my foot likes to rip. I know, I better be careful.
Almost there. Now all we have to do is add the straps and add a little zipper stop. Let's look at this. I think we did good. Zipper works good. I'm just going to add a little zipper stop to it. How about that? Let's get the handles real quick and see what they look like. I will probably just rivet my handles on. And I think that's the easiest way to do it. Could sew them and rivet them on. Out. All right. Here we go. All done. We'll add the straps and the zipper stop and we're good thanks for watching